Hey guys, welcome back to our lesson series, this uh, Good Christian but Bad Habits. You know, when we look at this series, uh, we're talking about the idea that we can be good Christians but still have these bad habits that we're doing. So what is the definition of good Christian we've been using? Well, I'm hoping you guys have been watching the videos and know this by now, but a good Christian is someone who picks up their cross daily and follows after Christ. We get it from the story of the rich young ruler. And Christ at the end of it told him that you, although he was following all the Ten Commandments, that he was still missing something. And his final command was to tell him was when he told him to sell all of his stuff and give all of it to the poor and then pick up his cross daily and follow after Christ. The rich young ruler chose not to do that so because he was exceedingly wealthy. But as us as good Christians, our call is to pick up a cross daily and follow after Christ. It's an active pursuit after the heart of God. And so I'm hoping that you guys are doing that. But although we are good Christians, we do have these bad habits. I mean, so far we've talked about being hearers and not doers, you know, getting fat in the faith, you know, kind of mentality, you listening to everything but not doing anything with it. And we've talked about, you know, being judgmental of other people's sin, but not worrying about our own or worrying about somebody else's. You know, we're more ashamed of what we're doing. So in order to keep ourselves from being put in the spotlight, we shame other people in the action. But the problem with that is, is Christ very clearly is in the book of Matthew 7 said that we need to check our own self before we wreck ourselves. You know, to instead of plucking the speck out of our brother's eye, pull the log out of ours so we can see the speck more clearly in our brothers. I mean, deal with our own sin first and then help our brothers find the speck in their own eye. All this kind of stemmed from the idea of Romans chapter 7 as we began this lesson series. And it was the idea that Paul was trying to fight his fleshly state. We're a good Christian like Paul was, but because we are made of the flesh, we do actions that we do not want to do. Rome, uh, in the book of Romans chapter 7, Paul went so far as to say that I hate the sin that my flesh does. He says, my flesh does things that I hate to do. He's trying to say that, yes, he has bad habits, but the good Christian part of him is the fact that he understands that those are bad habits, and that he hates the fact that he's doing them, and he's fighting against it to stop it, but... He's still made of flesh. Today we're going to kind of continue on to this idea of bad habits. The bad habit I want to talk about today is the grumbling and disputing we do as Christians. You know, in the book, in the Word of God, we see the passage come together that says, you know, for they will know you as my followers by your love. Christ was talking to disciples and how, how can I identify you as my disciple was the fact that or how would people know that we were disciples of Christ it was by the love that we had the way that we loved each other that we, they would know that we were the followers after God and the reason why that's so important is because we have a love that's given to us that is beyond anything in this world you know we hear the Greek word agape love this unconditional love this love that surmounts all things and all understanding we have that given to us so we give it to other people and that's how people knew that we are followers of Christ but a lot of times our bad habits as a good Christian we show that love but our bad habit that pops up is when we grumble and dispute because when we fight against each other when we fight against God when we're just grumbling because we can we show ourselves as a different thing than we are when Christ calls us to be and it's something we see in uh, the book of Philippians chapter 2 Verse 1, or verse 12 and 16 says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling and disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of the crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast to the word of God, life, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ 
I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. This is Paul talking to the Philippians. And while he's talking to the Philippians, he's telling them that, hey, you need to continue doing what you're supposed to do, what you're called in your salvation to Christ, to go after and do all these good works. You know, I do not believe in a works doctrine. I do not believe you could work yourself into heaven because if you could do that, then the cross meant nothing. It was the good work of Christ on the cross that gives us an opportunity to get to heaven. But he says in this in that you need to work out your own salvation. What that means is you need to strengthen it. You need to keep it going. You need to work it out. You need to go out and use it. But with respect. That's where the fear and trembling comes together. With respect of the Almighty. The word fear you guys see a lot of times in Scripture. You know when you say you don't have the fear of God instilled in you. you know that word fear means a high level of respect. It's not the fact that I'm afraid of God. It's the fact that I respect God so much that I understand his power and his amazingness. But the next part he talks about is this do all things without grumbling or disputing. That one's hard. And the reason why that one's hard is because we do it a lot. We, dis we grumble and dispute in multiple different ways. We grumble and dispute, as I said earlier, when it comes to us and God. When we come with God, God gives us a commandment and says, hey, I need you to do this. He tells us, hey, this is what I'm calling you to do. And what we do is we grumble the whole time. It's kind of like a little kid when you tell them to go clean their room. And the first thing they go, I don't want to clean my room. They just start grumbling and walking down the hallway. That grumbling, or when they argue back, that dispute, it does not show the true character of that kid. And honestly, it just kind of shows you our, our reaction to it kind of shows you what we can expect maybe God to do as well. Luckily, God has this unconditional love towards us, and although we grumble and dispute with him, he's kind of like, well, this is what I have for you, so you can take it or leave it. But when we grumble and dispute with God, we show ourselves not to be what God truly calls us to be. We show ourselves to be not ones who are all into the situation. Although we can be good Christians and are actively pursuing after God, when we grumble and dispute with God, we're not showing our true character, which is the bad habit. You know, our outward expression needs to be a reflection of our inward choices, which is the choice in Christ, our, our Savior. But not only do we dispute with God, but we dispute with each other. I said that, you know, how would they know that you are my disciples by the way that you love one another? But when we dispute back and forth between each other is when a lot of issues come arise. This is why a lot of people say, or as Muhammad Gandhi, Gandhi said, I can't talk today if you can't tell, but what Muhammad Gandhi said was, I love your Christ, but I hate your Christians. And the reason why things are like that are said is because Christians are not showing the Christ they're supposed to be following. And the reason why is because we dispute and grumble back and forth. It's this discontentment. I am not content where I'm at. I'm not happy with what's going on. You're not supposed to grumble and dispute. You're supposed to come together as a family and figure it out. And that's one of the things that we're called to do. That's one of our bad habits that we have. But also just to be in yourself, this act of discontentment, and just constant grumbling, where you're not happy with anything. That comes into a, a kind of a sharp life choice. Because when you just make an active choice to sit here and grumble and dispute in your own self, or in your own church. What you're doing, you're not showing who Christ is in your life, the victory that he's had over your sin, or the victory that he has in his life that brings you joy. The life of a Christian was not meant to be one of rebel and dispute. It was one meant to be filled with life and joy. Although there would be trials and tribulations, we have the joy and the peace in Christ our Lord and our salvation. But it's our act of choices not to go after that that really affect us here. So I want to tell you guys that the bad habit for this week is this idea of being grumbled or dis or disputed, this grumbling and disputing that we have together. That we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to come together and make decisions as a family. Go to Christ and say, God, I need help. But not only that, to find the joy in our lives and find the peace that comes in Christ. I love you guys. I miss you guys. I can't wait to see y'all again. But until then, you guys have a good one.
Oh, 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 oh,